Wilbur. Look, I just bought it. How do you like it? Set me back 375 bucks. Ah, that's big. I bet the next size comes on wheels. Oh, boy. Any duck that gets hit with that goes first class. <laughs> just feel the balance. Huh? How's it feel? Mm, like $375. And worth every cent of it. Oh, by the way, Wilbur, what type of gun will you be using? Follow me. Huh? How do you like it? Which end does the cork come out? <laughs> Hello. I'm Mr. Red. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course, that is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Red. Go right to the source and ask the horse, he'll give you the answer that you endorse. He's always on a steady course. Talk to Mr. Red. All right. Welcome, everybody, to a very special podcast. This is the podcast where we watch your favorite TV shows of yesteryear and then discuss them over a beverage, an adult beverage. <laughs> I know I've been saying wine for the longest time, but it's kind of a lie. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, mostly on my part. Yeah, I keep up the... Uh, the winification of the podcast, though. But if this is your first time at the rodeo, I'm Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here by Kat Halstead, the author. Hello! And I believe this is our first episode of 2015. It's a whole new year. Yeah. Anyway, this week, we decided to watch the 1961 classic. We're going way back here. We decided, you know, we've, we're in the 80s, the 90s, and the nows. We need to represent our brothers of yesteryear. Yeah, we have to go, like, to actual yesteryear. Like, the golden era of television. Yes. What better way to usher this in with the classic sitcom, Mr. Ed? Now, the show originally aired... Um... In syndication. All right, so they had syndication in the 60s, believe it or not. Yeah. I thought this was like an, like an 80s, 90s thing. Yeah, I didn't realize syndication was like that far back. So the show aired in syndication from January to July of 1961 and then got swooped over to CBS. Yes. Where it stayed on their schedule until 1966. Decent run, a decent showing. Not bad at all. No, and the show's title character is a talking horse, who I guess originally was a short story character. Yeah, he was in short stories that appeared in magazines. Anyway, tonight we decided to watch the season two episode of Mr. Ed. Season two, episode seven. It's called Ed the Hunter. And this is the one where Wilbur and his neighbor Addison decide to go on a hunting trip and they decide to bring along Ed and the wives. Yes. So yes. what is your relationship with Mr. Ed? So how I watch a show originally from on Nick at Night. So this is like one of the early Nick at Night era shows. Yeah, it was one of those shows. I remember watching it on Nick at Night along with like Donna Reed or whatever else was on back then. I believe it was one of the original shows to air on Nick at Night, because according to this, it aired on Nick at Night from 1986 to 1993. It had a nice long run on Nick at Night then, wow. And the episode opens with uh, the title of character, Mr. Ed. He's gazing in the mirror. He is, like, staring in the mirror at himself, and he's like, I think I'm getting a double chin from eating <laughs> too many alfalfa snacks from watching TV. My first thought is like, all right, so Mr. Ed, he has a mirror. We're like, why does a horse need a mirror? To check his mane. That's why. He's got to look good for all the fillies. And then Wilbur gives him a television set. He puts it in the barn. And it's, it's like, it's not really within like reach. It's like kind of far away. So I'm trying to think of like the logistics of Mr. Ed turning on and off the TV set. Doesn't he have a remote control? I don't really know the origins of the remote control did it exist at this point in time hold on i'll ask google okay google what year was the tv remote control introduced okay google don't read it out loud is it a silent answer yeah 
All right, so sometimes we ask Google questions because we don't know the answer. Sometimes she is nice enough to read us the answer to the question. Tonight is not one of those nights. The first remote intended to control a television was developed by Zenith Radio Corporation in 1950. So, yeah, there might be... Yeah, they weren't, like, what we think of as a remote control. It's like, oh, my God, you got to see these pictures. Isn't it, like, it's connected by a cord? Yeah. See, I didn't even realize, like, when did when did television, like, really become prominent? It was, like, the, in the, mid, 50s. the mid to late 50s? I think, yeah, like, early, mid 50s, I think, because they were introduced in the 40s. Still, the logistics of Mr. Ed turning on and off the TV set is just mind-blowing to me because he's a horse. He doesn't have thumbs. He he needs... That's all- where you have a problem with him with the TV set. This is my first of many problems. <laughs> like, he uses his limbs to stand. So, like, it's not like he can sit down and then, like, bring up his, like, two front limbs and, like, control a TV set. So, like, I just... Does he use his mouth? Like, is it set upon somewhere? Like, I don't I don't know. They don't I show... Should actually, you know, I think he might use his mouth. He might use his mouth. So, like, it's probably laid down on a table and he, like, puts his mouth and he, like, taps it. Yeah, it's almost like a cart. It's on a cart because... The only place, they only had one cord where it plugged into. It wasn't like it was attached to 25 million cords like our TVs are now. That is true. That is true. So Wilbur comes in to announce that he is going camping at Mammoth Lake in the High Sierras. Yes. Which I believe is like, the is it like the Sierra Nevada range? Yeah. Ones? The show takes place in California, correct? Yes. Okay. See, I feel like this came up a lot in the early years of the series like where they were located but Mm -hmm. this particular episode because i haven't seen it in like a good like 10 years i i couldn't quite remember where they lived i didn't know they lived in like kansas or somewhere else yeah they're definitely not in kansas wilbur announces that they're gonna go camping at mammoth lake in the high sierras um wilbur's gonna go not camping they're going hunting right yeah hunting. yeah but he sells it first as at first as camping to ed yeah does he yeah he says we're gonna go camping and so he's going to go with Addison, the neighbor, who's just like yeah. the older. I admit, like, he seems like he's like wealthy. He's like a wealthy man. He's got to be wealthy because he's like retired. You never see him go to work. No, he's like probably in his like late 50s, early 60s. He's got like a foxy wife. Yeah. You know, he has the time. So like we're going to go up to the high Sierras and go hunting slash camping. And uh, Wilbur always wanted to go out into the wild and let his beard, gr- beard grow. And Ed's like, me too. I always wanted to let my tail grow wild. (laughs) And then the only reason that that Mr. Ed is like upset about going hunting is because Addison, or as he refers to him as the old vinegar puss. Ed does not like Addison at all. No, and Addison equally doesn't like Ed, which is kind of like stupid because it's like... It's a horse. We know that Mr. Ed can talk and he has a personality, but Addison doesn't know this. So he, he is just like a heartless human being for just like hated an animal for no reason. Well, I do think that Ed kind of like picks on him in a way though. Like he'll knock him around. Oh yeah, he's kind of a dick. You know? But it's just like, it's an animal yeah. though. So like, it's not like he hates him just because he hates him. He's like, he hates him because like, whenever this horse is around, things do not go well. <laughs> no. Now... Let's go back to the beginning of Mr. Ed, like the history of it. So the show, okay. the show's origin. So basically Wilbur Post and his wife, Carol, they buy the house. And yeah. As part of the stipulation, it's that Mr. Ed comes with the house. Yeah. So Mr. Ed is there like from the, the tail beginning, basically. The yeah. very beginning. And Mr. Addison is is the neighbor. So he is obviously, like, already familiar with Mr. Ed, I guess. Probably. Unless he just didn't talk to the people who lived there before. Now, do we know what happened to, like, to the original occupants of the house that... Um, I don't think so. I think they just moved. Maybe they got sick of having to deal with this talking horse. Because I figure it's tough. Because, like, the early years of television, like, they don't bother with the exposition of everything. Yeah. It's just like, let's just take this idea and run with it. Yeah, let's just take this idea of a crazy talking horse. So, they never bother to explain, like, how Mr. Ed can talk. 
Yeah. And Wilbur is like the only one who can either hear him or understand him. Wilbur is the only one that Ed chooses to talk to because Ed thinks he's the only one worthy of being spoken to. So there's obviously like a lot of things going on here. Like is Wilbur mentally ill? Is he really like the patient of a mental institution? Uh, no, I don't think that's it. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of whacked out theories going on here. So basically, apparently, I missed the, those in my research. So basically, Mr. Ed comes with the house. Wilbur is like forced to be his owner. Like you don't even like he could be like a horrible caretaker. Like you don't know his. Like, yeah, I think really he just wanted the house because it had the little outdoors because the stable he thought was like the perfect place for his office. And what's his job? Do we know what his job? Architect. Is? Oh, is it? Why is everyone always an architect? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. We've had Ted Mosby, Mike Brady, Jan Brady, and now Wilbur. I should really like start making a chart of who has what occupation. We should. We'll we'll definitely start doing that. This is a new year. It's a fresh start. So we can now easily organize everybody's jobs. Yeah. All right. So Mr. Addison is an old vinegar puss, and Wilbur insists that Mr. Ed must come because they need to someone to carry the provisions and the dead ducks back and forth. And then Ed's like, you've got Addison. Let that jackass carry the stuff back, <laughs> which is great. I kind of went like, whoa, did they say that on TV in the 1960s? Wow. I thought the same thing. There was a lot of subtle, subtle humor that was... Probably you could consider risque, but probably went over the heads of a lot of human beings back then. Yeah. One of my favorite fun facts about Mr. Ed is that he's a Pisces. Mr. Ed is a Pisces, and he checks his horoscope on a regular basis. Yep. So he basically is like, you know, before I commit to this trip, I want to check my horoscope. And right around this time, Addison shows up with his, like, shiny new gun, which he announces like 600 times this episode that it costs 375 bucks. Okay, do you want to know what that would be in today's money? I thought of like looking that up, but I was just like, eh, I really don't care. But if you have the information, please share. $2,977.84. That is fucking outrageous. Yeah. (laughs) So like you can't even buy like today, $375 is not even enough to buy like a PlayStation. Yeah. Mr. Addison shows up. With his shiny new gun. Mm-hmm. And I immediately got the impression that it's just basically an extension of his penis. <laughs> now, when I was in high school, I took a class. Like, I had to do, like, an, an English, an elective. I had to do some, kind of, some type of English elective. Uh-huh. And I was like, all right, I'll do modern lit and film. You know, why not? And the teacher who taught the course was a former burner, a former hippie. And uh-huh. he would just, like force us to watch all these insane movies but he just always had this like unique approach to everything and i always just remember him saying like anytime that you see two men on the screen arguing over either a car a gun or just some other object the person who is bragging about whatever it costs more Mm -hmm. it's basically just them making up for the fact that they have a small penis so I'm basically watching this episode, and I'm like, Mr. Addison is has a small penis. And Wilbur, mm-hmm. for a lack of better terms, is hung like a horse. Because the one who just doesn't care, like, you know what? I have this old gun that I had since I was a kid. That's yeah, that he ba- keeps just, like, hanging out by his filing cabinet. Yeah. So, like, Wilbur is basically, he's like, I'm just dragging this thing between my legs. Is basically how I was looking into this whole conversation. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now... Another way that you could look at this, like, whole series, uh-huh. Mr. Addison is just always coming over. Like, he is always trying to show off whatever he has that Wilbur doesn't have. Yeah. So, like, I imagine he might have, like, some kind of, like, showering device in the barn because he has to, like, bathe Ed. Yeah. So, like, maybe one day uh, his wife, Carol, was just, like, taking a long beauty shower. And he's like, you know what, I'll just kind of, like, maybe I'll just, like, cl- cleanse myself in the barn today. And Addison probably came by and he, like, walked in. And he was like, whoa, whoa, what is that? 
off what was hanging between Wilbur's legs and just what? was like, oh, I have to compensate somehow. Yeah, so like every episode is now him like coming. He's like, I bought this new Cadillac. I bought this new gun that cost $2,000. You bought this new Studebaker. All right, so Wilbur refers to his gun as Old Betsy. Mm-hmm. And it basically looks like the like a, like a pop gun that a kid would yeah. have, like a child would have. It's like just your basic shotgun. And Mr. Addison's like, which end does the cork come out? You get it, Addison. It doesn't cost three hundred and seventy-five damn dollars. And he's like, my gun's a lot better than your gun. And Wilbur's like, you know what? I got a bigger penis than you, so. And you know what? I think there's like a weird sexual tension between Wilbur and Camille, Mr. Addison's wife. Yeah. And it shows up later on this episode. Okay. We'll get to it. But it's possible that Camille might have seen uh, Wilbur showering at the same time as you well. Mean, wait, what's her name? Camille. I thought it was Kay. Uh, I, I got Camille out of it, but you might be right. I don't know. Oh, no, you're right. It is Kay. <laughs> hey, Camille didn't sound right. I was like... There's one scene, though, where Mr. Addison sees right Camille. Kay, come here. Yeah, maybe that's what I heard. I don't know. I was drunk when I watched this, so... <laughs> <laughs> which time the first time all right so now basically mr addison is like insistent that the wives are not coming he's like well okay let's be real you're going hunting you're gonna go hang out in the woods for a few days do you really want your wife there no like nowadays like i feel like a woman would like you know she's like fuck that i ain't going yeah like i don't understand why the women wanted to go so badly like, that didn't make sense to me. Like, I'd be like, yeah, the guys are out of the house. We can buy stuff and not have to explain right away. And then, so when we roll up to the next scene, this is where I get, like, a little confused. So the next scene, Wilbur is, like, in the the den. He's at the, the desk in the den, mm-hmm. and he's, like, mapping out the trip. So, like, first off, we get, like, the lost art of mapping a route ahead of time. Yeah, on an actual paper map. Like, he has, like, a book, like an atlas. And he's, like, going through it, and he's, like, plotting mm-hmm. the roads and just planning everything out. And his wife, Carol, comes down, and she, like, lays on the couch, and she, like, does, like, a fake cough. So she's, like, pretending she's sick. And I guess she's pretending to be sick so she can go on the hunting trip. Yeah, I don't get that. Like, I just don't understand why, if you were sick, you would go on a hunting trip. And so, like, I'm thinking, I'm like, wait... My first thought was, like, is she, like, trying to get out of the hunting trip? So I had to go back and rewind it. And then Addison's like, no, mm-hmm. the wives aren't coming. So I'm like, okay, yeah. this is weird. So Wilbur approaches the wife, and she's like, oh, it's nothing. You know, the doctor said it's just, like, it's a bad time of year, and the air is just too, like, smoggy. And Wilbur shocked. He's like, you went to a doctor? Yeah. Like, well, I think when he first heard doctor, he's like, wait, you're not knocked up, are you? You I already got to take care of a rascally horse. I don't need a kid right now. Yeah, he's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you went to a doctor? Okay, side note. Okay. All right, let's say that Wilbur Post was in a Sophie's Choice situation. <laughs> and he had to choose between his wife, Carol, or Mr. Ed. Oh. Who would he pick Ooh, to survive? Yikes. Who would he pick to survive is basically the... If he were smart, he'd pick Carol, but I fear he would probably pick Ed. I think so, too, because, you know, based on the camaraderie of the two characters, Mm -hmm. Carol just seems like the side character in all this. Like, she is just, like, the background character. I feel like there's no relationship there. And he, like, he sneaks away. Because we never see it, because he's always talking to the horse. Yeah, he sneaks away in the night to talk to the horse. He always, like, holds back. Like, you know, he's like, you know what, you guys go ahead. I have something I have to do, and it's, like, him sneaking back to talk to the horse. But, I mean... I mean, I guess it's that better that he's talking to a horse than watching porn. Yeah, I guess you're right. But it's just, like... <laughs> you know what, though? If you knew a fucking talking horse, I would just, like... I have a million questions, like, right off the bat. It's like... Yeah. You know what? I think I'm going to stick with this talking horse. See how this thing rides out. But, That's true, because you kind of be like, okay, what do you know? What's all the gossip in the neighborhood? Who's doing the milkman? <laughs> <laughs> but um, our side talk aside, Wilbur now insists that Carol must come on the hunting trip. You know, instead of like canceling the trip because she might be sick, he's like, no, no, you have to come on the trip now. Like, what is she supposed to do up there while he's hunting duck? Nothing, really. Just whatever she does at home, but she's just going to do it in the wilderness. 
Oh, well, it's not, I don't think she does much at the house either. No, she doesn't seem, she's not like, well, she, like, she's not like a TV mom. She's just like a TV housewife. Mm-hmm. So she, she really has like no role. Yeah. Like, is she barren? Like, what is her deal? I think they were newlyweds in the first episode. Yeah, the, uh, like I know back then, like you only got married if you like had like if you were gonna have children. That was like the whole point of getting married. Yeah. And she just she produced no offspring, and doesn't she get pregnant later on? I think. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to we'll maybe have to like last season or something. Yeah, like the show. Like yeah, but like, do you want? I want a show with a like a talking horse and a kid. Oh my god. So. We then flip over to the Addison's house, and uh, Addison's wife, Kay, who we learned is that her name, she's doing the same trick. Like, she's pretending to be sick, and she's coughing. And this isn't Addison's first time, Mr. Addison's first time at the rodeo. And he's like, I'm not falling for it. I know you're lying to me. He's He's like, like, stop it. You're not coming. He's like, you're not coming. But then the phone rings, and no one answers the phone. So Kay's like, all right, I guess I got to answer it. I don't know. So it's Carol Collin to, t- to announce that Wilbur said that the wives can go on the hunting trip. Yeah. And Mr. Addison is pissed. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? I'd be pissed too. Yeah, I, I probably would be pissed too. And then like Wilbur shows up and he's like, my wife is sick, so she must come. And But Mr. Addison already knew. And he just like walks out of the room. He doesn't say anything. He just leaves. Yeah. He bails. He's like, ugh. Like at this point, he like... He could have uninvited Wilbur on the hunting trip. Yeah. Like, he didn't have to take him. Well, I guess he wanted Ed, though, to carry all the dead ducks. Yeah. So, now Wilbur goes back to announce to Ed the big news that the girls are coming. But now Ed is upset. Yeah. He read his horoscope. He's a Pisces. And the news is dire. Oh, no. I believe the exact quotes of his, the exact horoscope message was, if you leave town tomorrow, disaster will befall upon you. Uh Uh-oh, that sounds ominous. Which is pretty fucking crazy to, like, put in an astrology magazine. Yeah. (laughs) Like, that's pretty specific. Well, okay, let's be real. This is Ed trying to get out of the camping trip did he want like wasn't he like kind of no actually no he wasn't for it at all all right no he was like down if it was him and wilbur but because addison was going he was like oh hell no yeah like i figure if you're a fucking horse like a talking horse and the horse Mm -hmm. is like i don't want to go like you can't fucking make me go like wilbur should honor his decision yeah but i don't know and Wilbur, you know, he tries to convince Ed that his superstition is based on ignorance. Yeah. Um, But, you know, Ed is totally a believer in superstition. So instead of, like, hanging a horseshoe above his door, doorway, he hangs a human shoe. One of Wilbur's shoes. It's awesome. So Wilbur's like, what is my shoe doing above your barn door? And uh, Ed's like, it's for good luck. (laughs) Well, Wilbur had said, you should be fine. You have four horseshoes with you on your feet. You'll be, you've got enough good luck. But, I mean, that protects humans from the supernatural. Does it protect horses exactly. from the supernatural? Who knows? So we then cut to the hunting trip. And basically, the wives, they turn their hunting camp into, like, a game of house. So they're, like, cleaning. They're, like, sweeping the ground the dirt and like there's cushions and stuff it was it was probably the first glamping experience (laughs) that was a good good observation there for glamping i have it in my notes glamping (laughs) so like carol is like she's like sweeping the the ground like like she's just like getting the the twigs and like the um like the leaves and the pine needles that fall down she's like brushing them out of the way so they only have to stand on, like, straight dirt. And Kay is, like, she has her fancy, like, bug spray thing. And she's, like, spraying for bugs because you don't want bugs on the campground. Mm-hmm. And um, then she well, finds... Well, you don't want bugs. Then she finds Addison's, like, duck call device. Yeah. And she's like, what's this? Duck whistle. 
the duck whistle. And Addison's like, oh, it's a duck whistle. Like, you know, it mimics the sound of their mating call. And she's like, you know what? I want to try it out. So she like, she toots into it. And at that moment, Carol's walking by Wilbur and then he like kisses her. Oh, they're so in love. But they're referring that the sound of a duck mating call is enough just to like swoop Wilbur off his feet, I guess. <laughs> but then Wilbur's a special snowflake, let's be real. Yeah. So then Mr. Addison wants to go down to the waters and check on the prey and like, you know, lay out like the, the viewing ground so they can kill duck. Mm-hmm. And he invites Wilbur, but uh, Wilbur doesn't want to go because he says, you know, I want to protect the wives from the wild animals. Yeah. And Addison's like, I don't think there's any wild animals out here. Then why are they hunting duck? Well, first off, like, yeah, like, why are they hunting duck? And then they're in the fucking mountains. Like, the yeah. high Sierras. Like, what do you mean there's no wild animals? There's definitely wild animals. There's probably cougar. There's probably bears. There's probably... <laughs> oh, Yeah. I have lived near mountains my entire life, so yeah. Yeah, so like, what are some of the dangerous animals that you have to watch out for? Well, you have to watch out, of course, for bear. Um, depending, of course, there's always deer, maybe elk, moose. Cougars? Cougars, mountain lions, big time. Although, to be actually, fair... I actually lived in a, an area that was highly populated with mountain lions. Although, to be fair... I think that Kay Addison is probably the cougar of this group because I think she has her own <laughs> feelings for Wilbur. So Probably. And you know what? Wilbur probably wanted to stick around because he's like, this is the first time that, you know, like I'm in I'm in the wild with Kay. And like Mr. Addison is like is like old, but but Kay is like she's like kind of young. Yeah, I feel like she wasn't as old as they wanted Kay to be. Kind of like Ethel on I Love Lucy, where she was, like, way younger than Fred in real life. Yeah, so, like, I think, like, Lucy and Ethel, like, in reality are, like, the same age. Mm Mm-hmm. But on the show, they kind of, like, played it up that Ethel was older. Yeah. But she still looks significantly younger than Fred. Yeah. They made Fred seem like he was, like, an 87-year-old man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah which is like which is the same thing i get from mr addison it's like all right like he's an older man like he's he's retired you know he's mm-hmm. lived his whole life and he has this like younger ish wife yeah and apparently, well, to be fair i think carol is a bit younger than wilbur yeah i what is the, what is their ages i don't know well okay wilbur is an architect and he in the military for a while. He was in in the Air Force. So he's at least... Mid-30s. Let, okay, so let's say... He's probably at least late 20s. Okay. It's always hard to tell because like people looked so much older back then. Mm-hmm. So Camille is the cougar of Mr. Hey. Ed. And Wilbur has to protect himself from the cougars, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? I guess so. But, um... So, all right, so... My favorite line of the whole episode, so Addison's like, I'm going down to the water. He's like, I'm going to check out, you know, on the scenery. And Camille just like kind of whispers to him. He's like, why don't you bring this, bring this um, duck call? I believe his exact, her exact line is, be careful, doll. If you want mommy, just blow the maiden call. And Mr. Addison just picks up the, like the duck whistle and puts it down on the tree stump. He's like, nope, I want nothing to do with you. (laughs) So Wilbur excuses himself and he goes and visits Ed and they're just now chatting in the woods. Like how far away are they like from the wives at this point? Uh, I don't think they're that far. Because I figure they're going to have to be like a significant distance away in order for Wilbur and Ed to have like a conversation. Well, Ed and Wilbur are always having conversations and everybody like walks in and they're like, are you talking to yourself? Yeah, they always seem to talk in, like, walk in. They always seem to walk in when Wilbur says the last word to Ed. It's never, like, Ed saying the last word. Yeah. But... I think sometimes, like, if they hear Ed, they don't... They think it's just Wilbur screwing around. Yeah, like, maybe he's, like, a voiceover kind of guy. Mm-hmm. But Ed is worried. 
He's still worried about his horoscope, and he's convinced that there's rhinoceroses in the area. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they could have taken a trip, played. And Wilbur's like, uh, this is not Africa. And Ed's like, well, what if they went to go visit their relatives? Which still what relatives, Ed? But basically, Mr. Ed wants to go home. And you yeah. then you hear a gunshot in the background. It's probably Mr. Addison, I guess, like practicing with his gun. Yeah, it's probably Addison. And Ed's like, I don't he, he's got to fire it at least once. He spent $375 on it for crying out loud. <laughs> How much should bullets cost? I don't know. So then we cut. So then we cut to like later on in the day, and Mr. Addison, he's like laying down. He's enjoying the scenery while Wilbur is like chopping firewood. He's like chopping up logs. Yeah. And Addison goes on to like, you know, he's like, I don't get how you city bumpkins do it because, you know, this is what life is about. It's just being on here, the fresh mountain air, the nice scenery. You know, you're basically mm-hmm. all to yourself. And, like, the camera pans away, and you see, like, Wilbur chopping the wood. Yeah. And then Wilbur, he asks Addison for some help with the fire logs to bring him back to the camp. And Addison apologizes. And instead of, like, Wilbur has, like, a whole pile of them in his hand, and Addison just grabs yeah. one log. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, don't- yeah, because Addison thinks he's better than Wilbur. And so Wilbur has to do the grunt work. And then... Right around here is Addison's like, he was like, you know what? He's like, maybe it was a good idea to have the wives come along. Because he's like, my wife just needs to get used to the crude outdoor living. Like, you know, she's a shopper. She, you know, she loves going down Rodeo Drive and just, <laughs> you know, spending all her money. You know, now yeah. here she can, like, become one with nature. And they go back to the campground. And the wives have morphed the campground into, like, a dining room set with fine china. Yes, this is where the glamping really Takes really effect. comes in full force. Yeah, there's fine china, there's crystal glasses, there's flower vases, I think there's candles too. There's tablecloths and candles. It was ridiculous. Like, who? Like, how do you pack that to go camping? Like, you're going to hike up to some spot on the woods and you're going to, like, bring all this breakable stuff how the hell are you going to wash any of that, crying out loud? Like, Was this the stuff that Mr. Ed had to carry up the mountains on his back, like, that he was complaining about? Probably up stove and, like, a cooler and stuff. Yeah, they had, like, a grill. They had, like, a huge grill. Yeah. Like, a, it, not even, like, a, like, it was, it looked heavy. And, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. So now the wives are like, boys, dinner's almost ready. You better hurry up and shave. Yeah. The guys are like, excuse us? The guys are pissed because they thought they were just going to let their beards grow for the weekend. Maybe get like the five o'clock shadow. Yeah. And I also must note that the girls are dressed like 1950s housewives, like even in the woods. like. Yeah, they've got this very specific style that they've got going on. Like it looks like they just went shopping. They're wearing like what they would wear at home. There's a difference. They're wearing pants out in the woods and at home they would wear a dress or a skirt. Oh, yeah, like, they were wearing, like, sweaters, I think. They were no Laura Petries. They were definitely not Laura, who could get away with wearing pants more often. (laughs) So now, you're... What I notice is, like, they keep showing this campground scene, but you don't... You never see Mr. Ed. Yeah. Like, they just allow him to roam around the woods like this? I think he's supposed to be, like, just off to the side. I don't know. They they just... They don't don't show him for some reason. I don't know. But, um... Now... Like, Carol and Kay, they're, you know, they're, like, now they're excited because they're, like, oh, I'm so glad the boys invited us, like, hunting with them. And Kay's, like, Carol. She encourages her. She's, like, Carol, you need to cough every once in a while because, like, they're going to think that you're fake. And, <laughs> and she does, like, this obvious Which she fake cough. is. <laughs> well, she hasn't even coughed since they, like, left the house like okay we're gone i stopped thinking it now yeah i think at one point wilbur's like you know since we've been up here you haven't coughed and carol's like yeah i think the mountain air is like refreshing it helps me i can breathe better up here the doctor was right so i believe this is the point now where the wives find a baby duck wandering around yeah there's a little duck wandering around and they're like oh it's so cute oh my god they go gaga for this little baby duck Obviously, because it doesn't shit on its hands or anything. Yeah, so now they take a stance, and they call the guys murderers. 
And Kay's like, would you have the nerve to shoot this baby's mother? And Addison's like, no, I wouldn't shoot her mother, but I'd like to get a few of his uncles, his aunts, and maybe a grandfather or two. (laughs) And this is where Ed, I think, really picks up on the whole, like, hunting thing, is when the women call the guys murderers, because he does that whole, whoa! He, like, gets really, like, intent on listening, because you can see him behind the guys through the trees. Yeah, and so now this is, like, the first time, too, where Addison is upset that the women are there, and the women now are like, you know what? We're going to go sleep somewhere else, like, six feet over here. <laughs> like, Yeah. And then I noticed they didn't bring any tents with them either. Yeah, they didn't have tents, but they had sleeping bags. Like, what kind of whack? Oh, obviously they had to leave the tent home because that's what happened. Yeah, so they're, like, in the wild. They left their tents at home. They're, like, completely in the wild. The, the ladies are just, like, you know, they're just sleeping on their own in their own little nook. The men are on the other side. Wilbur can't sleep. He's, like, oh, he has all these, like, unresolved issues. So he wakes up, and he's going to go over to the girls' camp. To just kind of like apologize to Carol. And he accidentally walks up to Kay. He like shakes her and he's like, I love you. And she rolls over and she's like, I love you too. But what will Addison think? Yeah, and then Addison's like right behind him. Yeah, which is like why I think that Kay has these like weird, unresolved issues with Wilbur. Like I just feel like she like spies on him for some reason. Well, she probably, he's like this youngish... Kind of cute guy living next door. Who's hung like a horse, of course. Who's hung like a horse. <laughs> and she's married to Addison. Who he has to uh, like make up for his shortcomings by spending like three grand on a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. And like to what? Just to shoot duck? Yeah. I don't know. But um, I, I don't know. I don't understand hunting. I did not grow up with people who hunted. I didn't, like, really know people who hunted until I moved to Colorado in high school. And even then, not really until college. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like, the people I knew just were not hunters. (laughs) So, now it's the next day, and they're down in the marshes, and they're doing the duck calls. Ed's there. They brought Mr. Ed with them. And Addison calls Mr. Ed. He's, He's bad luck. And then Wilbur's like, I know, he's had a hard time with his horoscope lately. And Addison's like, what? <laughs> Wilbur always, like, slips up. Yeah, like, Wilbur forgets that he's the only one who can hear Ed talk. <laughs> and, like, Ooh. you would think that, like, Addison would eventually would, like, pick up, like, something's, like, not right with that guy. Like, maybe we need to get him checked out. But, you know what, Kay's probably, like... No, you know, just just let him be. He's a young guy, you know. Like Addison, you're just jealous, sweetie. He's just a young guy. There's a generational gap. You don't understand these young kids. They're newlyweds. Just let Wilbur be. And he's like, all right, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Meanwhile, she's grabbing the binoculars and looking in into his bedroom window like, oh, I hope you take another shower tonight, Wilbur. Shower in the barn tonight, please. <laughs> I get a nice view. So, like, is Mr. Ed even real at this point? Like, Yes. They could... This is another whacked out theory I have. They could all be nudists. They're all nudists. And because they can't show the nudity on 1960s television, they Uh cover up... The censors cover up with a talking horse, which is just basically Wilbur's gigantic penis. Yeah, maybe. And so that's why Mrs. Addison... Kay is always like, yeah, I want to go hunting with you guys. Like, he doesn't need to bring a gun. She's actually, she's like, wait, I just thought we were going in the woods to like fool around. What do you mean hunting? Yeah. She's like, I thought we were swingers. She wishes. He's like, why did you tell me? Mr. Addison's like, why did you tell me that? I Like, I just spent $3,000 on this gun. She's like, yeah, that won't do. That won't do. Yeah. And so whenever like... Kay's like, oh, I just love how Wilbur always brings that horse around with him. (laughs) Addison's like, yeah, I know, I know. And she's like, no, 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 not that horse. The other horse. (laughs) I wish you people could see my face. I I think my face has been in my hands more this episode than any other episode. I keep just going like, oh, my God, Patrick. I don't know. I'm reading between the lines here. 
Between the lines. <laughs> How drunk were you when you watched this episode last night? Uh, like a half bottle of wine at that point. No, not too bad, but... All right, so we're on the next day. Um, you know, we're down at the marshes. They're finally going to hunt these ducks. They're finally going to hunt the duck. They're, like, they... Wilbur has old Betsy. Addison has his, like, three grand gun with him. And yeah. Addison begins to call the horse bad luck. Wilbur references, you know, the horse scopes, and we already know that. And Addison's about to shoot, so all the ducks are, like, flying now. And Ed, you know, right when he's, like... Addison takes aim, he's about to shoot, and Ed just, like, bumps his head into his, like, shoulder, causing him to miss his opportunity. And Addison's and like... see, that's the reason Addison doesn't like Mr. Ed. Because Ed does that shit to him all the time. <laughs> Wouldn't you think that, like, in the middle of the night, at some point in time, Addison would just come in and just, like, kill Mr. Ed? Mr. Ed is being a dick down at the hunting grounds, um... Yeah, you know, he's so making Addison miss a shot. He keeps doing it, like, so Addison's like, get your freaking horse out of here. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll bring him over here. So, like, he just turns him around is basically all he does. And then Ed just, like, flips his, like, tail, and his tail, like, brushes up against his face, causing him to miss the shot again. And I guess this was, like, the only two, oppor- two opportunities to, like, shoot duck, because now all of a sudden, like, they were all gone. Like, no more Yeah, ducks. like, I don't understand, like... Those ducks were apparently flying by really fast because Addison, like, couldn't, like, quickly re- regroup or anything. Like, they must have been flying by, like, that. Yeah, they're I don't think ducks. ducks fly that fast, but... But, um, Addison's like, you know what, I'm going to blow the duck call here, and then, Wilbur, you grab old Betsy and just, you know, just, just try to kill one. We just need to kill one this whole cam trip. Otherwise, my... Friends at home, my real friends at home, not you, are going to make fun of me. So yeah. Wilbur, he lines up. He has like a perfect shot, but then he sees the baby duck run by. The baby duck makes appearance, and he, he can't do it. The darn baby duck. Yeah, so Wilbur's like, I, I, I can't do this. I got to head back to the camp. And Addison's like, well, me and my $375 gun are going to try to get a duck. So Wilbur goes back, and... Ed still wants to go home. Like, he needs to get out of this because he thinks that the world is against him, basically. Yeah. So he pours ketchup all over himself and pretends okay. like he's shot by a careless hunter. Mister, how does Ed turn on the TV? How the hell does he open a ketchup bottle and pour ketchup on himself and smear it? He smears it in, like, one spot, which is, like, where his hooves would never be able to reach. And he wants to go home before his luck runs out. So now, like, Wilbur shows up, and he's like, oh, my God. He's like, I didn't even hear a gunshot. And Ed's like, um, he must have had a silencer. So <laughs> Wilbur's, like, all worried. They're, like, first off, like, you would think his first reaction would be to, like, try to stop the bleeding and, like, put, like, pressure on the wound. Yeah. But no, instead he just sits there, and he's like, I can't believe I let this happen to you. Like, Meanwhile, like, the blood's not running. It's just, like... It's, it's just there. It's, it's just, just stuck. Like, it's, like, it's clumped up. It l- obviously looks like ketchup. And Wilbur's like, all right, I'll just let you die instead of trying to stop the fake bleeding. Well, because he tried to touch Ed, and Ed was like, no, it hurts too much. Don't do it, Wilbur. Then I got really, really nervous right here because Addison comes back with his gun, his $375 slash $2,000 gun. And um, I'm like, oh my God, Like, are they going to just decide to put Ed out of his misery and just shoot him in the head at this point? Like, <laughs> like let's be real. I'm shocked and amazed that Addison did not suggest that. That's what I thought because I think... Addison had the gun in his hand. He's like, well, let me help you. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to shoot him in the head. And, like, at this point, Ed is going to have to, like, talk in front of the two of them and just be like, no, 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 no. I, I pretended to do this this whole time because Wilbur didn't know. Yeah. Wilbur didn't know that he was pretending. Wilbur has no clue what's going on. So. Let's be real. Wilbur's pretty clueless about a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, like, Addison could have been like, you know what? I don't want to see your horse suffer. Let's just kill him right now. And Wilbur would just go along with it because he he doesn't want that to happen either. And he doesn't know that he's faking. Yeah. So, like, that is a reality that could have happened. And Ed would have had to, like, jump up and, like, reveal that he was a talking horse. But 
I don't know. Instead, Addison's just like, you know what? I'm just going to go throw my guns in the lake instead. <laughs> yeah, let's just, like, toss the guns. Actually, I let's believe... Let's just throw them in the lake. I believe there goes the... my $375, which is more like three grand now. I believe the exact line is... All right, so Addison comes back. Wilbur's like, I can't do this. Addison, will you take my gun? And I'm like, oh my god, they're going to suggest shooting him in the head. And then he's like, and throw them in the lake, along with your gun, too. So Addison's like, all right, fine, I'll fucking do this. So he leaves for a few minutes, and that's when he realizes that Ed just rubs himself with ketchup. Yeah. And then Wilbur is just like, oh my god, this is like definitely a sign from the heavens. He's like, I think my hunting days are over. I'm going to go tell the wives. The wives are happy. And yeah. then Addison comes back to announce that he's thrown like three G's into the lake. And then yeah. he realizes, like, he's like, why is Ed standing up? Why is his ketchup stain gone? Yeah, like, why is that okay? And then I thought I was finally rid of that blasted horse. And Wilbur's reason's like, oh, it must have been a miracle. And nobody questions it. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, maybe it was a miracle. Well, what was it? Wilbur said something like, when a miracle happens, Addison, you don't question it. <laughs> and Addison's like, yeah, I guess you're right. So then they head home. Uh, now we're back in the barn. Ed is just like teasing Wilbur. Like, you now know that superstitions aren't real. This whole horoscope stuff is just baloney. And Ed's like, yeah, I believe you. And then you hear like a knocking on the wood. Because he, he knocked on wood because he's not taking any chances. And we get that stupid kind of like end of sitcom laugh to where like Wilbur's like, oh, I guess you're right. Let's not take any chances. <laughs> and that's basically the end of the episode. Yeah. We don't get any like weird wrap up scene involving like Mr. Addison worried that he just like wasted three thousand dollars for no reason okay so like think about it. if this was like an episode of a sitcom now one wilbur would not be keeping his gun just like carelessly by his filing cabinet addison would have waited like a week before he even got his gun he would not just throw it into the lake or ravine or anything and even if he did he'd be like going in after it because he spent three grand on the damn thing and he didn't even he maybe only fired it once. I thought we heard a gunshot. Yeah. Once. yeah. So he probably could have returned it and been like, you know what? It didn't work. It didn't work the way I thought it would. Yeah, he could Or, you know, he could just decide to go hunting without the wives and Wilbur and Ed. Yeah, he's like, you know what? You're obviously not a good hunting companion. He's like, I'll just never go hunting with you again and just keep my gun. I probably have other friends that we don't know about. Yeah. Like, just because I live next door to you doesn't mean we have to be buddies all the time. Don't you know? That's the sitcom rule. You're supposed to be buddies with your next door neighbors. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. In real life, I try to not talk to my neighbors. Yeah, I don't even think I even know my neighbors. Um, The last time I saw my neighbors, I was yelling at them for smoking marijuana. Like, my neighbor could have a talking horse and I would never know it. (laughs) But my neighbor could also be smoking marijuana and think they have a talking horse. (laughs) That might be a bit more likely. (laughs) So that was basically the 1962-ish episode of Mr. Ed, Ed the Hunter. It was 1961. It aired on November 12th, 1961. So that was Mr. Ed, uh, the golden age of television. Yes. It was a fast watch. It was like a fast episode. Yeah, it was fast. Like, I... I think I told you this the other day. I was almost tempted to just start Mr. Ed rewatch and watch everything I could on Hulu. I had to stop myself. (laughs) Because the episode is longer than most sitcoms are today, but it went by a lot quicker. Yeah, it it went by a bit quicker. Very different style than what we, we get now. These days you get a whole array of like side characters, side plots... Yeah. This, like, you mostly just deal with, like, the main cast. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much just, like, the A plot through the whole show. I don't think there's yeah. any special guest stars, and it's just, like, the significant... No, it was just the four actors in Ed. When I'm trying to think of, like, the history of the show, that, that seems to be, like, where most episodes evolve around, right? Mm-hmm. Except for, like, in the later it's seasons, like... when they bring in new characters. Yeah, like, occasionally there's guest stars because Ed goes on some wacky adventure... Yeah, I think things get a little uh, crazier in the later years. 
Yeah. So what and you... it kind of reminds me of that kid who doesn't know what they want to do, so they like have to try everything, and he drives the parents crazy. Like, oh my god, will you just pick a goddamn activity? <laughs> pick something that's not going to make our hair turn gray? So what did you think of the episode? I thought it was good. I was like, wait, it's over? Yeah, like I, I said, I was going to rewatch the whole thing. I, I love Mr. Ed, though. I, I remember watching Mr. Ed as a kid sitting on the living room floor with my brother and my mom. Yeah, I do remember the the days of watching it on Nick at Night and between yeah. 1986 and 1993, and then being an insomniac later on in my life and rewatching yeah. it. See, I didn't get that when I, I didn't have TV land in my early 20s. Yeah. And as always, until next time. Bye. bye.